How to Stop Lying to Ourselves One fine morning in September 1816, physician René Lenec was running late to his appointment with a female patient who had heart disease. While he was passing by the courtyard of the Louvre Museum in Paris, he saw two young boys playing with a wooden plank. While the other was pressing his ear against the edge of the plank, one boy was slightly hitting the other end with a pin. Lenec observed this and was then enlightened by the thought of an acoustic phenomenon that existed and was already prominent way before. In his records, he tallied, if you place your ear against one end of a wooden beam, the scratch of a pin at the other is distinctly audible. It occurred to me that this physical property might serve a useful purpose in the case I was dealing with. Upon his arrival at the hospital, he asked for a piece of paper, rolled it up into a tube and then held it against the patient's chest. There, he was able to hear the beating of the heart more intricately than when he used his ear directly. That day marks the beginning of his invention of the stethoscope, which was a revolutionary moment in the field of medicine. Back then, doctors always had to take into consideration what their patients would say about their condition, which probably inhibited them from thinking without confirmation bias. The stethoscope came to the physician's aid, telling them what was exactly going on in the hearts of their patients, without simply making themselves believe that their guesses were true. This narrative of René Lenec's life was used by best-selling author James Clear to strengthen his points regarding self-awareness. If you are still confused as to how these two concepts relate, allow me to explain further. Whenever we set plans, we tend to lie to ourselves about our progress for the sake of feeling better, even though we do not actually try to pace towards fulfilling these. For instance, you have a goal to be less of a procrastinator by the end of this year. You then claim that you're already submitting before deadlines, but your study and work habits have not really taken a turn quite yet. Clear says that in these scenarios, we tell ourselves lukewarm phrases such as, I've really been working on it with the time I have. There is not any hard measurements of these badly crafted words. We just say these to mask the truth that we have not been exerting much effort. Apparently, these feel-good lies matter because they keep us from understanding ourselves better, our strengths and points of improvement. They prohibit us from knowing the truth about what we are truly capable of doing. There is nothing wrong with not being able to achieve your task because you lack superhuman skills. What's wrong is trying to convince yourself that you can do the impossible by lying about your progress. Upon the creation of the stethoscope, Clear says came a tool for doctors to have independent diagnosis of their patients' conditions. He elaborated that there are also tools to make our lives have a clearer understanding of the current states of our lives. As for Clear, he used a workout journal to track his workout progress on a weekly basis. This allowed him to know his capabilities and helped him distinguish how much exactly he can increase the increments of the weights he lifts instead of just going to the gym and claiming to be working out. Working what out exactly? Next, he created annual reviews in which he created summaries on his progress in every aspect of his life on a yearly basis, including but not limited to business, health, and travel. Clear also kept integrity reports in which every spring, he takes the time to document how he's abiding by his core values. With these two files, he can easily have a hard measurement of how he is doing, allowing him to be more self-aware. Lastly, the author uses rescue time to track his productivity, such as how much time he's been putting off for browsing through social media sites in contrast to the hours he spends accomplishing actual work. The bottom line is, we need definite measurements in order to improve ourselves. The day will come that we wouldn't need any of these for the reason that we have already developed habits. But in the meantime, it's best to keep track of our progress to avoid lying to ourselves.